Hello and welcome to our daily devotions from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline, and I'm glad that you're watching this daily devotion. We pray they're a blessing for you. Today we're going to take a look at the gospel lesson appointed for this week, the fourth week of Lent, Litere Sunday. It comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes, then, and seeing the large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves, led by the, left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, it was close to the Passover. In other words, it was about the same time of the year that we're in right now. And in at least perhaps a year from the Passover where Jesus would be arrested, tried, crucified, and killed, eventually rising from the dead. But right now, Jesus isn't near Jerusalem. He's far to the north, on the other side of the lake of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. He's in the wilderness, if you will, outside the boundaries that were set up by God in the book of Numbers for the land of Israel, close to the place where the people of Israel had gathered before they entered the promised land and conquered it. Jesus is there with thousands of people in the wilderness, and the people are hungry. How is God in the flesh, Jesus, going to feed so many people in the wilderness? Well, it's really not that big of a deal for God, is it? I mean, God had fed people bread in the wilderness before. He had done it during the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Bread rained down each and every day from heaven. God provided food for the people of Israel in that way. God provides. He takes care of his people. And Jesus is God in the flesh. So he's able to take a few small loaves and fishes and use them to feed all the people there gathered in the wilderness. Not with bread raining down from heaven, but with bread flowing from Jesus. God in the flesh. In one sense, they are getting bread from heaven, aren't they? What more is heaven than being in the presence of God? Being in the presence of Jesus. And so, Jesus hands out the bread and the fish, 
And after everyone has eaten and is satisfied, the leftovers are collected. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. More leftovers than what they started with. It's a miracle. It proves who Jesus is. The Messiah, God in the flesh. He has shepherded his people. He has led them beside the still waters of the Sea of Galilee. He has set a table before them in the presence of his enemies. And he has fed them. Their cup has runneth over. Surely now goodness and mercy will follow those people all the days of their lives. And by faith they shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, the people don't quite understand what it means that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, God in the flesh. Instead, they merely see him as a bread provider, a bread king. They try to take him by force and make him a king. They try to take him by force and get him to provide each and every day for the rest of their lives. Provide food, that is. See, Jesus is happy to provide, and he provides for you. Yes, food to eat, a home to live in, clothes to wear. But more importantly, is what Jesus provides that we so often take for granted. Forgiveness of sins, life, salvation, rescuing from sin, death, and the power of the devil. It was near the Passover, after all. A year later, at the Passover, Jesus would be arrested. A year later, at the Passover, Jesus would be crucified. A year later, at the Passover, Jesus would die. And with his final breath, he will shout out, It is finished! Their sins are forgiven. It is finished. All they need for eternity with God in his kingdom is provided. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. He's not here to merely give you the day-by-day -day things you need in this world. He does that, yes! But there's something far more that he gives. Eternal life, forgiveness of sins, comfort, peace, the assurance that even though you die, yet shall you live, the promise of resurrection on the last day, the promise that your sins are already judged and gone and taken away, the promise that you'll eat more than just bread and fish. You'll eat the finest food of heaven, the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which has no end. The heavenly banquet has a seat reserved with your name on it in Jesus Christ. You want a little taste of that heavenly feast? Each week here at church, from this altar, we eat the very body and blood of Jesus, a foretaste of that heavenly feast. Heaven on earth here, providing bread for us here in the pews. We can eat it and be satisfied that our sins are forgiven. We can drink his blood and be satisfied knowing we have the hope of eternal life. We can eat from this altar and have peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace of the Lord that can be with you always. In the name of Jesus, amen.
the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to hear us, o Lord. to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, Oh.
O Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.